And very good morning to you. Welcome along to today's United Kingdom Talk. It's uh, Saturday, the 27th of April, 2012. Warm welcome along to you. Yes, uh, well, boys and girls, I know you're worried. I know you're worried about my poor little feet because I've been having trouble with my feet, haven't I? Do you remember on Wednesday's show I told you? Trouble with the sides of the feet, okay? Trouble with just above the elbow and trouble with the side of the head. Right, sensitive in all these areas, in particular my feet. I was getting to the point where it was um, actually difficult to go to work. Okay, I, I could still walk, but you had to walk carefully so that you didn't walk on that part of the foot that hurt. If you see what I mean. Certainly carrying in um, equipment to various places like the karaoke nights or uh, uh, not so much the quiz nights because I don't have to carry so much along there. But uh, the karaoke nights and Saturday, uh, if, you, if you saw Wednesday's show, Saturday I did uh, a 70th birthday party, which was fantastic. And I had the most wonderful birthday cake you've ever seen in your entire life. It really was. And I thought it was wonderful and it tasted... wasn't so wonderful when they told me they spent £150 on it, dear. £150 on a cake. Dear me. That's an awful lot of money to spend on a cake, isn't it? But it was very nice and it looked wonderful. So doing all that, uh, of course, at one of those functions, you have to carry in all your own equipment. Speakers and um, uh, 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 lights and computers and things like that it's all going to be carried in set up taken back down and i'm sort of hobbling along some bloke come up and says are you all right mate do you want a hand i said no no i'm all right because actually <coughs> generally people are quite good at offering you a hand at least when you get there not so good when you leave you know by the time you leave and you're starting packing your stuff they're all pissed by then you know and <laughs> you, you don't get much help going out but certainly going in off people offer but it, it actually makes it harder when people um very kind people offer to help because the stuff comes in and gets set up in a certain way do you see what i mean so if if people start bringing everything in and then you end up with a big pile of stuff in the corner and it's in the way of what you want to set up so although people are very kind, I usually say, no, I'll, 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 I'll soldier on like mother's brave little soldier. That's what I am. Mother's brave little so <coughs> mother's brave little soldier. Yes. Anyway, so this is all to do with the feet. So it was getting progressively more painful. Now, I've had this problem about 10 weeks, I suppose. It's been going on. 10 weeks of pain. You know, not 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 like pain, like a knife going into your foot or anything like that. Just just a, just a bit of an ache, and when you stepped on it, then it was oh, you're a little bit like that to the point of hobbling. Though I was hobbling, I was the Hobbit for a while. Anyway, so this Wednesday, I'm on this drugs trial thing. Uh, this Wednesday, <coughs> I had an appointment at the hospital for this drugs trial thing. So I went in there and I told my doctor. And uh, he, he is rather fantastic, I have to say. Right, but if I've got a problem, I just go down there. Because uh, you get special... If you're on a drugs trial, you get special treatment. Yeah, I won't tell you what it's for, but uh, it, you do get special treatment, boys and girls. Special treatment. So I've gone in there, and I said, I've got this problem with my feet. Oh, right, OK. So he scratched and he said, hmm, not sure. Now, I have been in before about this, and last time they sent me, if, if you're a regular uh, listener and viewer to the show, you'll know all about this. They sent me to this bone, oh, what's he called now? Osti, Osti, um, oh my word, uh, Osti, I'm just trying to think what it's called now, Osti something rather, where they start pushing and doing things like that too it was working on my neck mainly because i did have a pain that was starting at the side of my head and going down like that okay sort of just above my ear and going down incidentally those of you that are watching the show i have had a haircut i'm pleased to say now half one inside number one on top <coughs> to desperately try, <coughs> try and hide what looks like an ever-increasing bald spot on there um yes so uh, last time they sent me to this bone, uh, uh, bone lady, who was very nice, you know, and started pushing my neck and things like that. And it, to be honest, wasn't doing a lot. OK, I can't lie to you. Wasn't doing an awful lot. She just pushing and doing stuff like that all the time. Didn't really happen. Um, 
and I, I, I went to see them for about, I went to see her for about six weeks. Now, that in itself <coughs> was a little bit of a pain because this place is all the way in North London. You know, so Ronnie, my best mate, usually takes me down there. Uh, no reason, just because just he's my mate and, you know, want to go for a drive. Um, and she did that thing and I'd come home. Is it any better? No, not really. You know, didn't feel any better. So uh, we stopped that a few weeks ago. And it hasn't got any worse. And my feet got worse in that time because I never really told you about the feet. Anyway, so I went to see the doctor on Wednesday. He gave me, he said, try these, see how these goes. Uh, two weeks worth. If it's not better in a month, <clears throat> if it's slightly better in a month, don't come back. If it's just the same or worse, come back. OK, so he gave me these. I haven't got them here, actually. These anti-inflammatory tablets. Dio something or other. You know, they've all got these long names. I can't remember. Actually, do you don't want me to get them and tell you, do you? <gasps> oh, just a minute then. You are awkward sometimes. You really are. Stay there and talk amongst yourself. Go and get these pills. I can tell you what they are then. Just a minute. Are you still there? Good, thank God for that. Don't leave me here on my own, please. Die. Oh, I can't even read the bloody label. It's so small. Just a minute. I had to put my specs on for this. It's all falling apart. Diclofeniac sodium. D-I-C-L-O-F-E-N-A-C. How do you say that? Diclofenac. Diclofenac sodium MR 100 milligram tablets. OK, so he gave me these. Uh, so after that, we went out to the... Um, uh, uh, so we left the hospital and uh, said goodbye to my wonderful, fantastic doctor. Oh, he is. He's really good. He's really good. And uh, we popped over to Dominique's, which is like a little little restaurant type place that you eat. It's, it's, it's actually in North London, Hampstead. This is where I go, Hampstead, right? Uh, MR apparently. Oh, thank you, Richard. Good morning, Richard. Didn't even know you were with us. MR means modified release. <clears throat> thank you very much, Richard. I do appreciate that, dear. Modified release. Oh. Someone's come up here as well. Something's just popped up on my screen. How exciting. Modified release. The, uh, they are strong ibrew, ibuprofen. Good morning. Good morning, Richard. How wonderful for you. See, you just got to say it and someone tells you what it is. I had no idea. So well, what does modified release mean? Does it mean it comes out slowly? I'm just guessing it's something like this. So anyway, as I was saying, I, the, the place I go to, I actually go to the Royal Free Hospital in London, right, in Hampstead. And um, so after that, we went to this little restaurant place called Dominique's. We often go there afterwards and they do a vegetarian fry breakfast. And you get two of those lovely Linda McCartney sausages, uh, baked beans, <coughs> tomatoes, those fried potato things. What are they called? Don't know. And some sort of egg. You can have uh, fried or scrambled. I have scrambled egg. And uh, very, very nice. And, then, and, of course, toast and tea. So we had that there. Then we came out of there and uh, Ron drives us home. Now, I know he's not. This Ron is my best mate, OK? <clears throat> he doesn't really watch or listen to this show, so I can tell you this. I really hate his driving. He's one of those people that permanently drives on the right-hand side, OK? He's not a slow driver, which is all part of the reason I'm not keen on his driving. He's not a slow driver, but he, he insists on being in that right-hand lane, OK? And often, at the last minute, will cross right the way across, and it does my bloody brain in. It really does. It really does my brain in the way he crosses at the last minute, right across all the carriageways. And he's, he's always right. Okay, he's always right. So that's that. Oh, thank you, Simon. Simon on the Isle of Wight said they're hash browns. Of course they are. Why are they called hash browns, those potato things? Because they're not brown. They're like a golden colour where they've... Um, 
a, a, a golden colour where they've been, I suppose, they must have a deep fryer. Probably not very good for you. A deep fryer out there or something like that. Mind you, I say they're not good for you. <coughs> Better than those nasty little spindly McDonald's chips, aren't they? Yeah, they're so thin. I hate thin chips, don't you? We want proper, big, fat... We need width, boys and girls. We want thick ones. There's nothing worse than having a thin one shoved in your face, is there, girls? You know what I mean? We've got to have the thick ones. We don't want thin, skinny ones. They're no good. You, they, you, just, you just can't feel them touch the sides of your mouth as it goes in. We need thick ones. Thank you very much. Thick ones from proper chip shops. Pardon? Oh, please don't. Please don't make up your own jokes about that. Um... Where were we? Oh, yes. So, see, you know, I really don't like his drink. In fact, most of the time, I'll, I'll close my eyes in the, um, in the passenger seat and have a little doze because I feel safer like that. And it's funny, when you close your eyes, you actually do feel a lot safer, don't you? So he's driving home and, it, you know, a usual, a usual drive home. Um, where actually wasn't too much traffic at all. This was being, um, <coughs> let me think, what time was it? About, uh, it was actually about one o'clock on, on, on Wednesday afternoon. So we did that. And on the way home, there's this roundabout. There's several roundabouts on the way home. Near my house, there's a big roundabout. And this coach is on the left-hand lane. You know, there's kind of two lanes going round and round about. Trouble is, when it's a coach and a lorry, some people hesitate. Now, if you hesitate, you're going to be in problem. And the coach took the outside get going across. Ronnie took the inside bit, and we're both going straight over. Well, this coach has taken it a little... It wasn't actually Ronnie's fault in this instant. OK. Um, the coach has um, taken, gone round, and he's taken it too tight. And, of course, we're going forward. The coach is going forward and turning at the same time. And we suddenly became aware that the back of the coach wasn't quite following the front of the coach. And it just missed us by an inch or so. Oh, it terrifies the life out of me, these bloody big coaches. But, you know, that was the coach's fault. But as many times, usually, I have to say, it's not the coach's or Laura's fault. It's the little cars. It's a little cars. Now, that, 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 was, that was unusual for the coach not to take, to take it too tightly like that. Usually, it's a lorry or something like that. And what happens is that the lorry goes around the outside, and then some idiot driving a car will go around the inside and think in their head that they're not going to make it. And then they stop. They stop on the bloody roundabout. And, of course, you get stuck behind them and all these people start hooting, dear. The, 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 the standard of driving in this bloody country is getting worse and worse. It really is. I see it on the way home. I'm afraid I've become one of those um, very careful drivers. I'm the one who's on the inside lane on a motorway driving at between 55 and 60 mile an hour. I can't lie to you. I cannot lie to you, I'm one of those that drives at about 55 to 60 mile an hour, for, simply for the reason of uh, saving fuel, to be honest. That's the only reason I do it. I, I just save fuel, you know, and I save an awful lot of fuel. And recently, in the last week, because I've, uh, I've got on my iPhone this, this Tom Tom sat-nav thing, which is very good. OK, so you type in and I've got used to now uh, before I leave the house, because I often travel in and the, the route I take, there can be traffic jams at various places. I now type in <coughs> my um, destination, wherever I'm working, straight into the sat nav, even though I know the route. OK, because it, it's got this live traffic update thing on it. Oh, it's marvellous. Live traffic update on this thing. And it will tell you if on the route there's any traffic. <clears throat> and if available, it will um, uh, send you a different way to avoid the traffic. How fantastic is that? So I use that all the time now. The, uh, 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 the, the sat nav on there. And it's very helpful. Anyway, uh, the other thing which I noticed last night, so this week I've been following the sat-nav 
religiously. Usually I look at it, oh, oh, I'll, I'll go that way, though. I'll ignore it, you know, go another way. But recently I've been following the sat-nav religiously this whole week. And I've noticed it will take me as far as possible. Oh, why is that little, is there a little light flashing here? Why is there a light flashing on that? I don't know. Um, it's, I noticed it takes me via the motorway route all the time, if it can. And an unexpected advantage, which I've noticed this week, is that I'm getting a lot more miles per gallon. Now, I was getting a lot anyway, because I'm a careful driver. I don't need to accelerate 200 mile an hour to beat some dickhead away from the lights in their little Ford Fiesta. Bless them. We all see them, don't we? Us old fogies, there we are at the lights. And there he is, in the, in the car next to us. <clears throat> Baseball cap turned round the wrong way. Bleach blonde girlfriend sitting next to him. Looks over and starts revving his engine in his little Ford Fiesta, bless his heart. What he probably plays, two and a half thousand pounds per year in insurance. Car probably cost him about 300 quid. <coughs> it's got all the bits on pieces on it. The chrome exhaust, you know, which, 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 which has a hole in it, so it's making an awful lot of noise. The stripes down the side, and a few dents around it where he's had little extents, bless his little art. There he is, sitting next to you, 19 or 20 years old, revving his engine. Uh -huh. And I look over and I think, what a lovely little car as I sit there <clears throat> in my less than a year old car, where it's cost me £250 insurance for the year, for he got preemptive. And then off he goes, the lights go yelling, broom, he's gone. There I am, just slotting into gear and gently touching the accelerator and moving off. Wonderful. Why do we need to go that fast? And then perhaps once a week, about once a week, I fill up. He probably goes every three days because he keeps wasting fuel. We mustn't do it, dear. Save that money. And that's where it comes, you see. The, the sat-nav has saved me a lot of money. How much do you think? OK, well, this week I'm looking at getting an extra 50 miles out of my tank of fuel simply through following the sat nav. And I really didn't expect that. In my car, I've got a little Toyota Yaris thing. It's got a computer thing and it tells you how many miles the car should be doing. So when you fill it up, my car tells me that I can go for about 517 miles. OK. This week, I'm on track for going 630. Huh? Not to be sniffed at, is it? 630 miles. Just by following the sat-nav. Thank you very much. Yes? What do you think of that one? Thag Ashley was with us this morning, who says, Good morning, evil sod. You just scared one of my cats. Good. Good. Here, pussy, pussy. Boo. <laughs> Just noticed you were on them, flicked on YouTube, just as the cat jumped up on my chair. He took one look at your face on that big TV, stared for a moment, and did a runner. Am I on a big TV somewhere? Or is that wise? TVs are like mirrors, you know. They crack. Do be careful. Don't have the brilliance up too much. <clears throat> is, is my light shining so much it's blinding you this morning, Fagash Lil? Is it? <laughs> She says, I only forgot about you because I didn't know what day it was. No change there. They do try and pay attention to what's going on in the world, Fagash Lil. Dear me. Richard had just finished his night shift. Richard works very hard, don't you, Richard, in London? Oh, you poor thing. Do have a rest, Richard. Don't overdo it. Just put your feet up, wait till I've finished, and then you can go to sleep for a while. Are you, eat are you having breakfast? Do you have dinner? or What do night people do then? Do they have um, uh, breakfast or dinner when they've... Uh, uh, got home from work. What do you do? I don't know. There's a Skype. If you want to join in, Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon. All one word on the Skype, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Chris Reardon is the Skype. Or indeed, you can dial in by email, boys and girls. Uh, the email address is chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk anyway back to the feet so after this coach narrowly missed us 
when it was going around the um, uh, the roundabout too too narrowly. If, can, is that a word? Narrowly. So we got home and uh, got to. Uh, we popped into the, to, into. I don't like to say this too loudly because you know I'm a Waitrose shopper, don't you? But I'll, I'll just tell you, we pop. We popped into. We popped into Sains, Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's because it was on the way to his house because I wanted to buy some angel cake now I found angel cake in Waitrose but it's more angel slices than angel cake right so you get these like six slices whereas I quite it's got icing on the top I like just angel cake the big angel cake and you cut slices off so I went into that it's only on special offering Sainz was I bought I bought four of them I bought four angel cakes <clears throat> That's dreadful, isn't it? The, the best before date is the 5th of May, so, you know, I've got a few days to eat them all. <laughs> we do like a slice of angel cake. So we went round to Ron's house and we put Dallas on, uh, because I hadn't seen that yet. I do, do you like, are you watching, do you know, whenever I mention Dallas, no one seems to be watching it. I mention it at my karaoke nights, my quiz nights, no one ever seems to be watching Dallas. It's a great shame, really. I mean, like Channel 5, I've put it on at 11 o'clock at night, which really really isn't helping anyway, is it? Be honest. I was watching Dallas. So we had some angel cake. I actually had three slices. That's very naughty, isn't it? Three slices of angel cake. And I had one of these anti-inflammatory pills. I will get to the point. Will you please stop shouting at me? Get to the point. I am getting to the point. We are getting there. Don't worry. <coughs> okay. So I had one of these anti-inflammatory things about two o'clock. And then um, after various uh, 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 forms of different abuse, which Ronnie gives me out of his mouth, usually. Oh, he's always abusing me with his mouth. Um, after that, we um, left, or I left the house, hobbled back, hobbled back to his car. Can I just blow my nose? Just a minute. I'll... God's sake. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's better. Hobbled back to his car. He gave me a lift home. Uh, hobbled back indoors. But I did a little bit of paperwork indoors. And uh, then went to bed before uh, before my night's um, work. Which was actually the uh, karaoke night that I do on Wednesdays at uh, Belushi's in Borough High Street. Um, and I got up... Um at about half past six, because I have a couple of hours of sleep in the afternoon, you see. Got up about half past six at night, and I thought, OK, off we go. And I went downstairs, and I suddenly become aware my feet were no longer hurting. And I thought, you know, I thought my, it might have been because I'd been in bed for a while. Because I did notice if I laid down for, well, um, if, if I went to bed, and in the morning they usually be not too bad, and as time went on they'd get worse and worse. So... <coughs> I didn't think anything more of that. I thought, well, well the, the true test will, will happen when I'm at work. Because they're worse when I'm standing up for a long period of time. Generally at work, I'm standing up. I don't like to sit down at work unless I'm really knackered. You know, the old feet or legs are aching a bit. I like to stand up. So I stood up. I, I carried my gear in to Belushi's, set it all up, did the job, come home again. No pain in the feet. And the next day, Thursday, no pain in the feet. So I think this has done the trick. The diaclofenic, diaclo. Uh, yeah, um, fag Ashley, you'll know what these in. I don't know if Richard is still with us. Diaclofenic, anti, not antidepressants, anti, um, anti-inflammatories. Diaclo, diclofenic. Is it diclofenic? Okay, they seem to be doing the job. Anti, -if so no more pain in the feet, no more pain here in my arm and no more pain down my head one little tablet and they're tiny look they're little orange things you only have one tiny little things they are <coughs> seems to have done the job so i'm well happy about that absolutely pleased as anything now i wonder though i think you're supposed to complete how many have i got here i think he said there were two weeks two Four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Yeah, eleven, twelve, thirty. Yeah, that would make sense because I've had a few already. So they're about two weeks worth. Um, and that seems to have done the trick, really. 
Now, I assume, is it the same as antibiotics, where you need to complete the whole course of two weeks? Or should I stop now? I mean, I could ring up the doctor and he would just tell me what to do, I suppose. But uh, Or do I stop now and see what happens? What do you reckon, um, Fagash Neil? Because you're a, you was a nurse. Tell me, dear, tell me. Thank you. So there we are. Foot is now working uh, within normal perimeters. <clears throat> and then... And th oh, I must tell you, when I got back from Ron's house as well, so I, I also got my, my drugs trial drugs, OK? So I, I emptied this bag on the table, so I'm putting the little bottles in. I usually get three bottles of each thing. There's there's three different types of things. I've got nine bottles all together, right? So I've got... Um, uh, so I line them all up. I've tipped this bag up. Right, I've gone and done something and come back to the, to the, to the worktop in the kitchen. And uh, I've... I've lined these these little tablets up, and I thought, oh, I've only got two bottles of one one item here, so I've got three of that, three of that. Oh, there's only two bottles here. Oh, I'm kind of looking around. I looked back in the bag, and it wasn't in the bag. I thought, where on earth have they got? I thought, I'm panicking now, you know, because these are quite expensive. You you're probably looking at about five hundred pounds worth per bottle. OK, and the NHS just give you these things. Well, they don't give you, you pay taxes and things for all this. But that's how it works in this country. So, um, I've got straight on the phone to the hospital who have put me through to the pharmacy and put me through to the person who, who gave me the, the pills in the first place. And uh, she says, she says, she says, I counted them in the bag myself, sir. Uh, she said, there were definitely three bottles of each one because I counted them twice. She said, and I said, well, I'm sure they're not here. She said, well, I don't know where they could possibly have gone to. Right? Anyway, so I, I said, oh, I don't know. I said, they've gone some. I thought, are they in the car? And then I, pe oh, I felt so stupid. I picked up a tea towel. That was also on the worktop. And guess what was under there? It had rolled underneath. A bottle of pills had rolled underneath of that. And I, I thought, it was so stupid. I thought, cause so of course, I said to her, um, you know, I'm, I'm very, very, very sorry about that. Very, very sorry about that. Um, I said, but I've just found them there. They've rolled under the tea towel. How embarrassing is that? So she said, that's all right. And uh, end of end of story. So that's it. So that's my feet, and they all seem to be working now within normal perimeters, as data from Star Trek would say. My feet are now fully operational. Thank you very much. No pain at all. Absolutely no pain at all. When Doctor said I had to take my, my sock off, you see, he says, is, is it here? And he was squeezed my foot. Yeah, that's it! <laughs> i never forget having that burst appendix when I went in hospital with that burst appendix. And um, the doctor pushed down, he says, is it there? And, oh, yeah! But they have to do that, you know, to know exactly where the pain is, don't they? Uh, Fagash Lil says, um, it's OK, I wouldn't dare put you on full screen. <laughs> Would you not? Fagash Lil hasn't got me on full screen. It's probably wise, to be honest. And, um, oh, I thought you was a nurse. She says, I wasn't a nurse. That was Di Fox. I was a secretary. Oh, remember Di? I haven't spoken to Di for ages. Is she all right? Is she still doing radio stuff? The lovely Di Fox. Marches, uh, turmeric does the same thing. It's natural anti-inflammatory and your acidic foods cause inflammation. I get heel pain that way if I drink coffee. Acidic foods. I wonder what foods I'm having that are acidic, to be honest. Yeah, don't know. Don't know if I'm uh, eating any sort of... in. Uh, what do you call them? Um, oh, gosh. Um, uh, inflammatory foods. Don't know. Boys and girls, uh, if you want to join in at any time, don't forget you can do so uh, by... Let me just turn it on. Has that worked? Oh, I don't know if that's working today. One moment. Has that gone there? Oh, it's, that's not worked. There should be a little, little thing come up on the screen. That's... Not happening, I don't think. One minute. Is that it? No. Nope. Oh, there's nothing happening now. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, very strange. No, nothing happening there. Oh, well, what you should have had is something coming up on the screen there to tell you. 
uh, what the phone number is and all that if you want to join in. Let's just try something else for you. Was working earlier. Not happening now, though. Great Britain. Nope. Maybe you can see it and I can't. Has a, has a little thing come up with the phone number and everything on there? Because it's not happening now. Maybe if I just do that and try that again. No. No, I don't have that coming up at all, the phone number. But not to worry, if you want to join in at any time, um, the phone number is 020 8133 OK, that's a local London number. 020 8133 Six three five eight. If, if you've got Skype, my Skype call-in name is Chris Reardon. All one word. <clears throat> C H R I S R E A R D O N. Um, I think we might have someone who was trying to call in earlier, uh, probably while I was in full flow, and I, I didn't didn't quite get there. So, uh, well. Uh, just send a message there to see if they wanted to call in or not. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. All right. Um, Marge, has the little thing come up at the bottom there with the phone number and everything on it? Because I can't actually see it. I don't know why. I don't, don't seem to be able to see that this morning. I'm not sure that it's that, that thing's actually working. Perhaps if I um, type it again, I don't know. D... O N. No, I don't think that's working at all. Oh, well, not to worry, not to worry. We'll carry on, boys and girls. We'll carry on. So that that's all, that's all my feet. Oh, Marge has replied. Let's have a look. No, it's not. Isn't that strange? That was working earlier on. Don't know why that is. That, that was actually working earlier on. Have I done something wrong there? Um. Ooh. Let's save that and see what happens. Oh, there we go. We've got it. There we are. There we are. Name and phone number appearing at the bottom of your screen there. Once again, uh, the Skype in is all one word. Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or the phone number as well. Local no London number 020-8133-6358. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's an overlay. I think it's called an overlay, Marge. Now, very, very important this morning uh, that we sing happy birthday to someone. Because today... <clears throat> My great niece is one year old. Happy birthday, great niece Evie, who is in Lincolnshire. And at some point, I don't know if she's with us live or not, but um, her mum, my niece in law, whose name would be Stacy, my niece in law, uh, will be watching. Maybe she is now. I don't know. Maybe she will be later on. But very important that we sing to Evie, my godchild, goddaughter. Is it goddaughter? Is she goddaughter? It's her birthday. She is one year old today. So, are you ready? baby or the toddler now she's not a baby anymore she's a toddler is today one year old how marvelous is that evie is one year old happy birthday evie lots of love from uncle chris or great great uncle chris i think i think it's actually great uncle chris now isn't it yes Happy birthday, Evie, one year old i shall be bringing up your card and present on my next visit which isn't too far away is it thank you very much Good morning to uh, Matthew, who's in Croydon. Which is, oh my God, have you ever been to Croydon? What a dump. My God, that is really a dump. Anyway, Matthew's with us this morning, watching live for the first time, aren't you, Matthew? Good morning, Matthew. Matthew was one of the people that used to come to heaven. And he has a little little posse of friends that used to come to heaven where I was DJing. It must must be about five five or six years ago now. I had good times there. He says my hair is very short. I have to keep it short now, Matt, because the the bit in the middle is is fast disappearing, and the shorter it is, the less of it's all about you know trying to cover it all up. It's either that or I'm not having a bloody comb over like you have. 
Matt, I have I have actually noticed that. You've got a bit of a comb over, haven't you, Matt? Eh? <laughs> he puts all this gel and everything else in his hair. It's no good for you. It makes it all drop out. I am surely the proof of that, Matt. <coughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Yes, you certainly are. <laughs> Uh, Marge writes in, you can get a list of acidic foods online. Um, so, there oh, there's a lot of mess. Oh, I've missed all these messages here. I've missed all these messages here. You're all sending messages on the Facebook. Marge says, I get heel pain when I drink coffee or too much acidic food, joints as well. But it stops if I'd stop the, co the coffee or... Oh, I can't not drink tea, Marge. Oh, I, it's not, just not possible for me to give up tea. I'm sorry. I, I don't do uh, uh, coffee at all. Um, John says he loves his diclofenac. They help no end with my back. Uh, yes, I did look it up on the Internet, and apparently it's, uh, 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 lots of people with arthritis are also um, uh, oh, given... Oh, what's the word? Prescripted? Um, Prescripted, or what do they call it now? Not prescripted, given... You know when a doctor gives you something to take, what's that called? Oh, I can't remember. But when they're giving this, people with arthritis have it. So I thought, I thought, oh, I hope he doesn't think I've got arthritis. I'm not that bad. You know, all the exercise I do as well. Uh, Marge says, Michael Jackson will tell you how doctors love to drug you to death. Oh, no, I, a lot of that was his fault, I think. I think he was asking for more and more. You know, very foolish. Uh, a great shame, of course. The great Michael Jackson. I, I miss him in his music. I really do. Jason says, you look surprisingly well, dear. Looks like you've lost weight. What do you mean surprisingly well? Do I usually look ill then? <laughs> you do wonder sometimes when people say that. Oh, you look well today. And think, oh, do I usually look ill then? Thank you, Jason. Uh, Jason's doing very well. He's recently, because uh, Jason has been uh, a bit, I hope you don't mind me telling this, but Jason, Jason's been quite overweight for some time. But recently, I mean years, recently he's been going to the gym and doing a bit of exercise and he's lost an awful lot of weight. And I'm very impressed with you, Jason. Not only that, I think you gave up the smoking as well, didn't you? Which is good. That's the, that's the worst thing of the lot, smoking. I think, you know, if you want to give up the smoking, very fully acceptable to put on a load of weight when you're not smoking. But you've given up the smoking, I think, if I'm rightly saying so. And you've lost weight as well by doing your bits and pieces down the gym. Indeed, after this, to, after this show today, I'll, I'll record, you know, after I put the, the, um, the, re, uh, what do you call it? the recording of it together, then I shall uh, go out for a little run as well today. Because I only have time for a run on a Friday. I don't have time to get down to the swimming pool. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look. Uh, John says, uh, luckily my back has been good for ages. It's only now and again it goes and I end up stuck in bed. Oh, I'm sorry of that this morning. Sorry of that, John. And Jonathan in Ealing. Good morning, Jonathan. How are you today? How lovely. Are you coming out tonight? Jon Jonathan is someone who comes to West Five, which is a little club that I work at on Friday nights. West I hope we have a good night tonight. I think we'll have a good night tonight, Jonathan, because people will have been paid. It's that day, isn't it? It's that day. Here we are at the end of bloody April, dear. April! Christ! It's five months since Christmas. Yes, it is. December, January, February, March, April. Well, nearly five months. Isn't it? Five months. So I think we'll have a good time. Who have we got down there, West Five, tonight? Oh, it's Lola Lasagna from Brighton, so that's cool. She always does a good show. Uh, Marge says, uh, my picture is without my teeth in my mouth. And if you look closely, I have a third eye. It's a comical photo, so I need to lose weight. I've been fat all my life. Oh, me too, dear. Now, I think there was a period where I had a nice body. You know, and people were throwing themselves at me. <laughs> all that stopped. You know, I can stand in the corner DJing for hours on my own now. No one comes up and touches me or anything. It's most disappointing. It really is. You know, sometimes I have to touch myself to, to believe that I'm actually still there and have been noticed. <clears throat> Marge, um, from 145 to 215 up and down. Is that pounds, Marge? I think it is. I don't worry about it too much. I lose every spring. Oh, do you? Oh. 
And mine, 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 mine seem to be edging up slowly all the time. Unless I go for a run. I notice when I, whenever I go for a run, I will lose two pounds straight away. But it, does that mean that's mostly water and sweat that's come out of you? Because I do stink after it. I like running up to Ronnie's house because he lives near me. And by the time I get there, I really ming. And he hates it. He sends me up and use, to use his shower. Which is good because that means I'm not using my water because I'm on a metre. And I say, uh, I'll sit down there. I said, do you want me to have a shower? He said, yeah, go on, go upstairs. In, in a vile way. He said, yeah, go on, get upstairs and have a shower. And then when I go into his bathroom, he's got, he's got like, posh towels. Right, so he takes me up to the bathroom. And um, he, he's got this, because <clears throat> he's a little bit disabled, my mate. And he's got this um, screen thing that he has to put on the floor because so, he's got a special bathroom. And... Um, <laughs> And I grab grab a really a Ralph Lauren towel. Oh, Ralph Lauren towels! And he grabs it out, mate. Not that one. And he, he throws me this bit that's like a bit of cardboard. Honestly, <laughs> but at least I get to use it. Then I don't get to use my water. And he ends up paying for the water. How fabulous is that? <laughs> um, let's have a look. Right. Well. Uh, who else is with us this morning? Oh, Kalida in Japan. How wonderful. You're with us again. Good evening from Japan. I also loved shopping from Waitrose when I used to live in London. Canary Wharf. Did you live in Canary Wharf? Oh, my God, that is posh. I DJed in Canary Wharf around Christmas time just for someone's party. What a nightmare that is, getting in and out of there. They search your car and everything. I mean, what can I be carrying in there? It's plain to see, you know, a couple of speakers, some lights and things like that. It's hardly going to explode, is it? But they do. They search your car and everything, and you're not allowed to stop. Oh, it's a complete pain in the ass. working in Canary Wharf. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm glad you... I like... I love Waitrose. The service is so good, isn't it? It's really good. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, excellent quality in food. Miss the breaks. Uh, the breads and the soup from there. Yes, the only thing is it, with Waitrose, I notice um, <clears throat> the cake counter isn't very large. You know? The, the cake counter is sort of relatively small in Waitrose, which is a little bit odd. I can't quite work that out. And bread, I don't, don't have an awful amount of bread and cakes in Waitrose. Have you noticed that? Very, very strange. Um, Thagash Lil says, Happy birthday from all of us as well to little Evie. Um, the word I was looking for was prescribed. Yeah, the doctor prescribed you something. That was the word. Thank you very much. Um, Thagash Lil says, Sorry I missed a bit. People phoning me while you're on. Well, tell them not to, Thagash Lil. People phoning you while I'm on. I've never heard anything like it. How dare you be speaking to other people while I'm doing my patter? Anyway, we've got a phone call. Good morning, Marge, in Oklahoma. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Sorry. How are you today? All right? Hang on a minute. Oh, well, uh, I'm sorry. I an echo. I accidentally hit the call button. I was looking at the menu. Oh, <laughs> but sorry. But anyway, I, good I, morning. I thought you had called and, um, and it hadn't worked, so I thought I'd better call you back. Okay, that's fun. All right. You I'm having a little bit of pro problem buffering on YouTube. You're getting buffering today, are you? Just on YouTube. Oh, it goes on the Ustream as well. It's bo on both of them. Oh, yeah. I'm on, that's on my... Oh, I tell you yeah. what, yours, yours, you're not working too well today. We're having trouble hearing you, Marge. Yeah, I know it. Oh. I, I'll just hang, hang up. Yeah, OK, we'll have to leave that today. Maybe next time then, all right, Marge? Something's taking me over. Oh. <laughs> All right. See you then, darling. Have Mwah. a good day. Bye-bye. There we are, Marge in Oklahoma. We, she usually calls in. We have a little, like, ten-minute chat usually, but uh, she's got a very, very slow connection there. It's like about a quarter of an egg or something like that. Right. I must tell you, this this week, um, you remember I told you about that new guard? Oh, by the way, if you want to call in, very easy to do so. My Skype, best way to do it is on Skype. <clears throat> okay. Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Skype username is Chris Reardon. Or the phone number, 020-9090-0000. 020-9090-0000. 
8133 If you've just joined us, then, uh, and it's a Friday, if it's a Friday morning at 11.15 BST, that's UK time, then we are live and you can join in. If you're watching at any other time, then of course you're watching or listening to a recording. Once again, the Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon. Phone in number, 020, London number, local no London number. We're not one of those awful 085 numbers. Okay, 020 8133 If you're watching the um, recording, then always best to send an email in. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. The other way to do it is on Facebook. My Facebook username, Chris Weird in UK. So facebook.com forward slash Chris Weird in UK. I do have Twitter. I've had Twitter now a few months and I st it's the same as last time. I just don't see the bloody point of it. You know, every time I'm at work, I'll put it on and try and navigate my way around it. I, I just don't get Twitter. I just still don't get it. I really still don't get it. But I'm on there as well. Same username, Chris Redden, UK. Uh, Got to say good morning to Monsters BA, who has made a comment. Simply hi. So thank you very much, Monsters BA. Whereabouts are you then? Let's have a little look. Monsters BA. Oh, it doesn't say much about you, does it? I'm having a little look at your profile. Um... Oh, I see you like Gangnam Style. You got that on your playlist, have you? So, um, yeah, send us a little bit more in and tell us all about you, okay? Uh, good morning to. Now, where's that gone? Oh, that's dropped into. Um... Is that that's dropped into the uh, the spam thing? I don't know why that is. There we go. Uh, good morning to Ian. Who says you are m missing a beautiful treat, Marge? Because Ian uh, likes bush beans on sourdough, multi-grain bread for lunch. Hard to beat. I love bush baked beans. Whenever I go to America, uh, which is, we, we, I mean, we're not talking about weekly. Every, I don't know, once every 10 years, I now bring back a load of bush baked beans. Indeed, when Americans come over here, Lovely people who um, have become friends of the show. They often bring me some cans of bush baked beans back. I love bush baked beans. I thought the best baked beans were Heinz. But then came along bush baked beans from America. You get the vegetarian ones. I can get the bacon ones, whatever, whatever you're into. I can't try and get the vegetarian ones. To be honest, you know, the bacon ones, um, I, 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 avo I avoid those because I, I, don't, I don't believe in eating animals and that sort of thing. OK, but I have had occasion. And to be honest, there's, <laughs> there's barely a... They must wave the can across the bacon, you know. <laughs> there's hardly anything in there. Um, but bush baked beans, if you ever get the chance of trying those, OK? Uh, Kalida says, I like your shirt, Chris. Uh, you look rather charming today. Going on a date or something while you're asking? I'm all, always available for dates. <laughs> I haven't been on a date for ages. It usually goes terribly wrong, to be honest. You know, I can be sitting there, we might be sitting in a bar, so I, you know, I, that's the other thing. I don't really like going to bars. Obviously, I work in bars, and I like it when I'm working there. I like working in clubs. I like working in bars and all that and the other. But I don't actually like going out to one. So I can be sitting in a bar with someone, perhaps on a date, and, you know, after after 20 minutes, you know, after I've been chatting away to them, I do notice their eyes slowly glazing over. And then they sort of say, oh, I'm just going to the toilet. I'll be back in a minute. And so I'm sitting there with me with my glass of um, uh, 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 water or Coke. I don't. I generally don't buy Coke or anything like that. I. I just think I don't drink alcohol. I. I don't drink any sodas unless I can. Unless I absolutely. If I can't get a cup of tea, okay. If I can't get a cup of tea, I might have a Coke. Not a diet Coke. It's just pointless diet Coke. Apparently, the stuff in diet Coke is worse than sugar. Did you know that? Anyway, so I don't don't drink any sodas at all. Um, <coughs> So I'm sitting there with my coat when they go to the toilet and then you know, look at my watch and an hour passes and they're still not back. They just seem to disappear. I don't know if they're abducted by aliens or anything like that. You know, 
my friend Mark, who's with us this morning as well. Good morning, Mark. Nice to see you. Morning, Chris. Great show so far. Thank you, Mark. Mark, I think he's a Coke drinker as well. He sits there with his, um, uh, gets a couple of pints of Coke during the evening. He doesn't drink either. But I, I just, just just full of sugar, this stuff. But yes, you know, if I'm on a date or something, they usually say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going, um, <laughs> I'm just going to the toilet. And they don't come back. Does that happen to anyone else watching or listening this morning? Do let us know, okay? Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot UK. Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot UK. Anyway, I must tell you. Oh, Marge says Diet Coke is acid extreme. It makes me so sick I get inflamed all over my body, uh, even in the joints. Yeah, I mean, it's just not. It's not good. This stuff. You know, if you're gonna drink Coke, you might as well just have the one with the sugar in it. Don't be poncing about with all this diet this and that. because you know they've got to put something in instead of the sugar they don't just take out the sugar and then you're drinking coke without the sugar they've got to replace it with something else otherwise presumably coke without any sort of sweetener in it is absolutely vile i just suppose like, can you even but i bet you can't even buy it can you you know it's the sweetness of the thing um okie doke now i must tell you uh, talking of, um, oh, oh, here we go. Mark says, I only get Coke because it's too expensive in bars or if I've had a heavy night out getting drunk. Oh, I've, okay, I thought you just drank Coke all the time, Mark. Isn't it dearer now to buy a pint of Coke than a pint of beer, though? <coughs> I'm sure it is. Anyway, talking of karaoke, boys and girls, I've got to tell you this. Uh, so, Monday... Uh, Monday and Wednesdays, I do karaoke at a place called Belushi's in Borough High Street. A great night. Yeah, it re really is a very good night. Anyway, so Monday, we're getting towards, and it's it been, a, you know, a normal night, you know, quite busy, lots of people singing. And Monday, we're getting towards the end of the evening. Now, the way the karaoke works is you go in there and you set up your stuff and you start taking the requests so as the night goes on you hope you know you build up a little pile of bits of paper with people that are wanting to sit now as at mark who's with us this morning is actually one of our regular karaoke singers okay he comes once or twice a week to one of the places that i work and he will tell you that I'm a very fair person when it comes to putting people up. Even to the point, I'm sure sometimes, Mark, you're a little bit pissed off and you're thinking you're not getting up the queue far enough. But actually, you know that I'm just being really fair about it. It doesn't matter how well I know someone, and I, I consider Mark actually quite a good friend. doesn't matter how well I know someone, I will not let them jump the queue in front of someone else if I think someone else is, is due before them. Do you see what I mean? OK, so I like to think of myself as a very, very fair person when it comes to putting the people up. If it's a four hour do, say, for example, 10 to 2, right? What happens generally by half past 12, quarter to one, you then have enough requests to last you right the way through until two o'clock in the morning. OK. So it gets to that point and you can't take any more requests. It's just not possible. You cannot fit anyone else in. And you have to start saying, OK, we're full up now. Uh, won't be able to take any more requests this morning. And end of story. Right. Or tonight. Between then and two o'clock, more people will continue to come up and try and put a request in. And I have to say no. And sometimes it's a little bit ridiculous. They say things like, can you squeeze me in? Now, how, uh, you know, if someone could tell me how you would go about squeezing someone in, I'd love to know. It's physically impossible to do that. The only way you can do it is to take someone else out that is already in the queue and slide the other one in. And you say no. And then they come out with all sorts of crap, you know, maybe it's their birthday or it's their friend's birthday or they want their friend to sing, who's a really fantastic singer. Oh, you've got to hear him sing. Go on, please put him in. The... You can't do it. It's impossible. Not only that, in certain venues, certainly the ones Belushi's in, in, in Borough High Street, behind me is a big screen. <clears throat> and if it's a busy night, which it usually is, 
there is a list of people waiting to sing in the order. Now, I put the list up there because some of them smoke. They want to go outside or they want to go to the toilet or they want to go to the bar and they don't want to miss their spot. So it's up on the wall behind them on this big screen when they're coming up next. Now, if I was, and I never do, if I was to take someone out of that queue and put someone else in, they would notice it straight away. Especially the regulars. And all hell would break. They'd be straight, I, I tell you, they'd be straight. They, you are watched like a hawk by certain people. You absolutely are. And they would come straight over. Hang on a minute, why have you taken my name off the list? They can see what's going on, right? So therefore, you, you, there's no way you can take someone out of the queue. And quite frankly, it's not fair. And you can stand it, and sometimes they will argue with you. You know, but we came in specially to sing tonight. We'll come in a bit earlier. These people were here earlier. They've got their requests in. They will now sing. It gets to the point. And as I say, 12.30, quarter to one. By then, you're full up. You can't take any more. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look here. Uh, Pushka says, I have a question, Chris. My oh, I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, we've got a cat question coming up in a moment. So, Monday... And this is the first time this has happened. Monday, a really rude woman came up. Oh, hi. Um, how do I get to sing? I'm really sorry, madam. We're, we're full up now. I can't take any more requests. Uh, we're back here on Monday at 10 o'clock. Oh, right. But um, uh, I'm, I, I want to sing. How, oh, how do I do that? And she's, she's like fluttering the eyelashes and big smile on her face. You know, I'm pushing the chest my way. Now, I'm sorry, ladies, you do have a habit of doing this when you want to get your own way. I'm sorry, it happens all the time when I'm doing a career going, unfortunately, me being a pufter, it doesn't actually work on me. You're wasting your time. Much better for you to send your good-looking boyfriend over. He might get his own way, but you won't. <laughs> OK? Uh, <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so she's doing all that business. I'm really sorry, we're full up now, I can't take any more requests. Yes, you can. Why are you being such an arsehole about it? And then immediately, my, my whole attitude changed. And I then put on an obviously fake smile, okay? I'm really sorry, madam, we can't help you anymore. Um, I, can't, I can't fit any more in. And she's, she, 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 she's, she's getting quite abusive now with her mouth. Not threateningly, OK? We're not talking shaking fists, just with her mouth. And I knew straight away what she was trying to do. Um, she wanted me to get angry so that I would say something or be rude in such a way that she should, could then go over to the manager and tell them so that I would get into trouble. I, I, I've, you know, I haven't been doing this 30 years to know exactly what's going on around me. Do you see what I mean? I knew exactly what she was doing. And I said to her, this, this has gone on for a few minutes, so I responded to her with, Whatever you say to me, madam, I will not be rude. I will continue to call you madam and I will treat you with respect. Is there anything else I can help you with, madam? And I smiled. With that, she walked off. End of story. So it carried on. And all this time, there's this bloke singing on the stage. It was one of the regulars. What's his name? Les. Lovely bloke. He comes in and he sings. Um, he likes it really loud. He always tells me to turn it, make it, make it much louder. Um, <laughs> uh, so he's continuing to sing and he's looked at me and thrown his eyes up like that because he sees this all going on. By now, it's now about 12 minutes to two o'clock in the, in the evening. Remember, we finish at two o'clock. OK, she also said to me, well, how many songs have you got? So I held up this little pile of papers and this lot and they're all up on the screen there. And what you see, even not those on the screen, we are not going to get to the bottom of them because uh, the licensing in this country, two o'clock means two o'clock. OK, it doesn't mean five past two. It doesn't mean you can go after two o'clock. Two o'clock means two o'clock. If you go ten seconds past two o'clock, the police can come in. 
and take action. All right? That can happen. So you finish at two o'clock. It's not me that decides that. It's the, the licensing authorities that tell us you finish at two o'clock. And people stand there and argue that you can do one more and it doesn't matter. Yes, it does. You've got to play at two o'clock. You've got to finish at two o'clock. Anyway, so she went away. <coughs> And um, this bloke was singing, and uh, he finished his song, Les. What did he do? I can't... I think it was The Verve. He did something by The Verve. And then, a little bit... About a minute later, there's another singer on, and this woman's come, come round, and then jumped on the stage and tried to come round the back. And, of course, I've put my arm straight across, because, the, I like, there's a stage... OK, there's a stage at the back, and only a little stage, little lights that I put round it, little rope light. And then I'm next to that with my equipment and all the wires on the floor. You know, so you don't really want anyone behind there simply because there's wires on the floor. You won't be electrocuted because everything's plugged in. But you could trip over if you didn't know where the wires are. Obviously, I know where the wires are and all that. So this woman's jumped on the stage and she's come, come across and la lounged lunged at, at the equipment to try and push a button or something like that. I've put my hand straight across uh, uh, to stop her coming across. And she's got a, a hand on my arm, digging her nails into my arm now. So I've grabbed the mic. and get, Someone get a doorman quickly, please, uh, and sort this out. And as I, haven't, I haven't communicated with her or anything, not said a word to her. Doorman came over, and I have a very good rapport with the doorman. I'd never, ever call the doorman over unless I absolutely have to, OK? And I'm afraid, ladies, it is you who are the problem. It's never the lads that are the problem. If I get a Larry lad come over, and, you know, I'll be firm with him, and usually, oh, I'm sorry, mate, and they go off, and that's it. They're, they're just, there's no problem with the lad. It's the girls. It's the girls who are the problem. Don't get me wrong, 99.9% .9 of the girls are fantastic and wonderful. I've got some very good lady friends in there, um, in particular a girl called Danny. All the staff are wonderful, of course. Uh, there's Danny, there's Soraya, and um, Lauren. I haven't seen Lauren for ages. Some wonderful girls. But the drunk girls, the really pissed girls, are a problem because they think they can get their own way all the time. So I called over a doorman, and uh, he said, yes, Chris, this one here. Please sort her out. Grab, grabs the girl by the arm and out she went. And that was it. Never saw her again. Apparently, she was then outside and given the doorman grief as well. And had already given the barman grief because then a barman come over and said, I've had a problem with her as well. So, and that, that, that was it. So she was out. So that was quite exciting. Attacked! Attacked in the DJ box, dear! <laughs> That wasn't the only bit of excitement this week. Oh, no! At the quiz night on Tuesday, and I do a wonderful quiz night um, at the Mayflower. And it is a wonderful... I work in this lovely little pub on Tuesday nights at the Mayflower in Rotherhive. And um, 8.30 to 10.30 on Tuesday nights. Uh, and sometimes with the questions... You know, you give the answers and people say, oh, it's not the right answer. Definitely not the right answer. And again, 95% of the time, it was the right answer. And then they get on their little telephones at the end. Oh, it does piss me off. It really does. They get on their little phone and up, up, they bring up the, um, uh, uh, they, they ring up the, uh, they, they bring up the, the what's that called not google yeah google search or wikipedia was it, is it wikipedia wikipedia and they start looking up answers and oh it, oh it was right after all you know they put it down there are some questions um to be honest that you give the answer and then someone on their answer sheet might put down an answer and actually think oh actually i'm not sure now you know, and you look at that, and it's possible that both answers could be accepted, right? But there's been a couple of occasions where um, an answer's been given, you give the answer, da da da, and then someone shouts out, da da da, da and you think about it, and you're like, yeah, okay, have that, and, and then they all start shouting and screaming, dear. Oh, what a nightmare. What a nightmare. But generally, it works quite well. I think we've got to the point now. What we're going to have, what we're going to have to do, is say the answer on the answer sheet is the only one we can accept. 
even if it's wrong. I, I don't see another way around it because it creates rows. And Tuesday there was a bit of a row. There were there were two. There was one girl in there who's learning to be doctor, I think, and another girl in there who is a doctor. Uh, let me see what the question was. Have I still got it here, or oh, I haven't got it here now? Um. Because I've got my list of questions. No, it's not here. I can't think what the name of the... Oh, I know what it was. Yeah, it was a, It was the picture round. It was the picture round, and it was a picture... <clears throat> who had to say what the disease was, and it, the answer was measles. And then this doctor says, he said, well, you could actually have put... Um, Oh, the, the, there is a terrible thing that you get. What is it now? And it looks like a measles rash. I'm just trying to think what it's called now. Anyone? Anyone think what that one's called? Not measles. Um, uh, it's like a rash, and then when you put a glass on it and lift it, if it doesn't disappear, then it's this thing. Someone, someone had come back to me and tell me what that was. And she said, you could have had that as well. And I thought about it, and I, I thought, do you know what? Yes. I have read about that. So I said, we will also, also accept this. And then this, this other girl started screaming and shouting at the other end of the place, dear. And I thought, oh, I can't get involved in it. I said, I tell you what, you come round here and have a word with her. Well, it all kicked off, dear. The two of them we've started rowing. <laughs> I just carried on with the quiz, dear. That's it. But do you see what I mean? So it's very, it can be difficult with a quiz. Uh, or... Fag Ashley was just about to tell me what that is now. I know you're going to tell me what it is. Um, just a minute. Uh, Fag Ashley. Meningitis. Thank you very much, Fag Ashley. Meningitis. That's the thing, okay? Meningitis. Hang on a minute. Well, Marge says I'm missing questions on another Facebook post. In. Need one message post in place. What have I missed? What have I missed? Tell me what I've missed. Um, meningitis, that's the thing. So it looks similar to measles. So I accepted that answer again. She started moaning down the other end, and that was it. And then, then they came. But then, then, oh, they started to row. The pair of them did. Anyway, so I just carried on with the quiz. So it can... You've got to be very strong to do a quiz night. OK? You've got to stand there and say, No, I will not accept that answer. They're there with a the mobile bloody phone checking answers and all this all the time. Because the other thing is, of course, uh, Google search and Wikipedia, <clears throat> you can get um, a differing of opinion on there. You know, you could type in da 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 and get two completely different answers on the internet. So it's difficult to know exactly, because the internet is a wonderful place, but there's a lot, also a lot of crap on there as well, isn't there? So you've got to be careful there. Marge, would you like to tell me what I'm missing? Because I don't know what, you, what you're going on about there. You say I'm missing something. All right. Um, so, so that was the quiz night. And it was a good, good, good night. We do, we do a very good quiz night. If you're ever in the London area and you want to come to that quiz night, it's at the Mayflower every Tuesday night uh, between 8.30 and 10.30 in the morning. Uh, sorry, in the evening. Tuesday nights, 8.30 to 10.30. If you're going to go, and there's a few of you, please ring ahead and book a table, because all the tables go. It's the busiest night of the week. All the tables go. And it is it is a bit of a laugh. You take it lighthearted. It's not too serious or anything like that. All right? Um, so that's the quiz night. That was the row. What else have I got to tell you here? Um, oh! Uh, let, I, actually, let's just do a, a few messages now. Um, meningitis, yeah, thank you, Fagash Leo told us meningitis. Uh, Mark says scabies. What are you talking about scabies? You haven't got scabies of your Mark. Oh, that's terrible. You get special cream for that. The only thing is it stinks. It's not very nice smelling stuff. <laughs> scabies. Oh, I do feel sorry for you. It says scabies on Mark's thing. Mark's Mark's a karaoke singer, aren't you, Mark? Do you want to try and um, let's have a look here? Uh, okay, Mark, do you want to um, try singing? Oh, sorry, Mark thought it thought it what the scab scabies is the answer to what? 
Oh, I beg your pardon. No, 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 no. Oh, no, scabies wouldn't look like that. No, it's like little red dots and, and very itchy. Sorry, I thought you were saying you had scabies. <laughs> oh, dear me. Thank you, Mark. Um, Marge still hasn't told me what, what things I'm missing here. <coughs> there we are. Mark, stay there a second. Um... Pushka wants to know, I have a question, Chris. My cat often bristles up her fur and hopping sideways towards me as if she is trying to intimidate me. I don't know if she is OK. Do I have a bad relationship with her? Oh, I don't know that one, Pushka. That's an un... My cat bristles the fur up and hops sideways towards me. Is she trying to intimidate me? I don't know. I've never heard of that one. I thought Marches, I think she's playing. I think you're probably right. I think she's probably just playing with you, my darling. All right? We love our cats, don't we? We absolutely love our cats. All right, now, Mark is a karaoke singer. Mark, do you want to try and... I don't know if this is going to work or not. Um, I'll give you a call. What you've got to do, Mark, is while we're on a call, you have to stop the video stream... Otherwise, you'll get echo in and all that sort of thing. I don't know if you want to try and sing live with us this morning. I'll just give you a few seconds to turn off your video screen. I can't hear you yet, OK, because I haven't pushed your fader up. <coughs> and uh, this might or might not... I don't think it will work, actually, actually, because your thing... You're on the same fader as the music has come up. There you go. Mark, you're on there. Are you with us? Hello. Good morning, Mark. How are you? I'm OK, Chris. All right. Can you... i tell you what... <coughs> do you have the um sing to the world on your computer no i don't no yeah because i don't think that will work because the music is on the same fader as the skype yeah so that that won't work i'm afraid mate i'm sure it won't let me see if i've got it on here <coughs> um Let's just let's just try it, try it quickly then. Sing to the world. There we are. And maybe you can sing us a song live this morning. How exciting <laughs> is that? I haven't seen you much this week. You've been busy. Oh, very busy, Chris. Did you hear about that woman who attacked me? Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. The oh. things we get up with at karaoke. Eh? Hey, I'm going to palm them off to you next time. Yeah. Yeah. What song do you want to try? Let's see if it works. I don't even know. Eh? What should we sing? You tell me. Um. I don't know, actually. It's, uh... Oh, by the way, I've got to tell you, I'm waiting for a delivery at the moment, and he's supposed to come between now and half past 12, so I might have to disappear quickly, just for a second or two, to, to accept my delivery. OK. Go on. Quickly, what are you going to uh, do? OK. Uh, let's do um, a bit of Sandy. Grease. Sand. Grease, yeah? OK. Yeah, Sandy. Uh, let's, let's see if, see if I can do some of that. I don't know that. if you're going to be able to hear it or what. Listen carefully, then. Let's see how we go. I might, if I stop you, it just means we can't... It, it's not working properly, all right? Even though it might sound like... Here it comes, here it comes. Stranded at the driving Branded a fool What will they say Monday at Can't you see I'm in misery? Oh, Mark. No. Oh, what a shame. No, that doesn't doesn't work too well, that, I'm afraid, my friend. Oh, really? we, we kind of got oh. the first bit. 
Okay. We got the first bit of it, but um, no, it doesn't work too well. But never mind, that was worth having a go, weren't it? Oh, we can, you know what we can do, Chris? We can film it one time and then we can play it on oh, the Oh, yeah, show. yeah. I could, oh, the only thing is on the YouTube thing, I can't... Oh, at least I don't think I can play out YouTube clips. Okay. I'll have a little look because we've, we've just... Because we were using um, <clears throat> Ustream to uh, yeah. uh, do the bits and pieces... Uh, but um, uh, we recently went, uh, uh, sorry, Ustream, but they kept showing adverts all the time, so we gave up with that one. <laughs> yeah. And we went on to the Ustream. Anyway, you got a busy week ahead? Um, quite busy, yeah. I've got, uh, tonight I'm doing a bit of filming for um, uh, a pub in London, uh, which I'm not going to mention if I'm not allowed to. You just say whatever you want. You just say whatever um, you want on here. Well, it's at um, the walkabout in Temple How's tonight. How's that going? Because that one's it's, been going quite a long time as well, hasn't it? That yeah, that's been going quite a while. And tonight, what we're doing is it's the first in a series of uh, monthly events. Yes. Uh, tonight, we're going to have um, a sumo wrestling, not a sumo wrestling, a gladiator duel. Oh, yeah. So, basically, you come up between uh, 8.30 and 10.30 at the walkabout temple, right next to the station, that is. Right. Um, and it's happy hour as well. So, drinks are going to be £2.50 till 10. Um, and you can just... Well, you can have a go and beat whoever you want up. Well, on the uh, on the uh, gladiator thing, do you get yeah, to wear you the know, costume you... and all that? Uh, yeah, well, you're going to get the hat and that, you know, the, <laughs> the protective hat, and you get the jewel thing. And um, we're what are actually one of those uh, all-in-one things that they wear. What are they leotards, aren't they? They don't yeah. have blooming Leota. I don't think there'd be one that fits me, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're uh, we're doing that, and um, we're we're actually looking forward to it. I spoke to the DJ last night, and uh, he said that um, I'm gonna actually win it. Oh right, okay. So, um, but um, yes, yeah, so we're doing that, and um, I'm gonna do a bit of filming for him tonight. So if anybody wants to come down, yeah, um, it's on between eight thirty and ten thirty, and then we're gonna have like a, a retro. Night. Is this every uh, Friday? Every Friday night we have a retro fever night um, till about 3am. Yeah. And then they give away free sweets as well, which is quite nice. Oh, we like free sweets. Yeah, we'll we do. That. And um, <laughs> but the um, the jewel is only on for tonight between 8.30 and 10.30. I'm with you, yes. Um, so if you're in London or if you're, you can get down to London... Come down to see us, and uh, you might even win a prize. I'm not sure. You can win a prize. I, I think it might be a bottle of champagne, if I'm oh, correct. So I don't know, but it's not so much about the uh, prize, though. Is but it? then we got uh, next month. We got um, I think sumo wrestling. Yeah. Um, and then we got a bucking bronco coming up, and then we got. Um, you ever done that bucking bronco? I have. Yeah, I'm rubbish at that. Very difficult. I'm very bad. Very very um, difficult indeed. Go on. But yeah, so it's, uh, we're looking forward to it, and um, it's like a new new thing that we're doing down there. Um, and obviously, it's a great company, uh, great friends, and uh, yeah. So the DJ actually will be happy that I've actually promoted this on your show, Chris. That's all right. Yes. So um, yeah, to, try. It. The only thing is, the recording of this doesn't come up until tomorrow because what we do oh, on yes. Friday mornings is record Saturday's show. But of course, they'll hear it for next week, you know. So yeah, you know. well, if if they are listening to tomorrow's show, then um, obviously next month is going to be. Uh, I think it's the uh, sumo wrestling yeah. at the end of next month. Uh, on a Friday night, but um, I'll post the details on your Facebook, and if you can uh, let people know. Yeah, just put it on my Facebook wall, and that's fine, Mark, all right? And, uh, yeah, so have we seen you at all at the weekend? Belushi's in Camden on Sunday or anything? Um, I probably won't be down on Sunday. You're going to have to miss me for one night, I think. Okay. I think and, Mary, uh, Mary was, uh, she had a little uh, little operation in hospital, and she wasn't going to be down for three weeks, but I think she's everything's moved along quite nicely and quickly, so I think she's coming down on um, uh, on this Sunday. So I'm looking forward to Belushi's in Camden on Sunday night. Yeah, I mean, we missed her. And uh, Marshall's going to be back on Sunday as well. Good. good. Marshall and his little dance. Yeah, his little dance. I, his little I might dance. try a little dance, actually, next time. I think you time. should. I think you should. Shall then, we dance? Da, 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 and da, I, was actually, I was actually thinking as well, Chris, you know the little screen on the side um, in Camden? Uh, the little TV screen where you are? Yes. Maybe we should try and put the words up on there so people can just join in. I've tried. Um... I, I thought the distribution thing was in the cupboard. 
So I actually went in and put a lead in there, and it, it, I don't know why, but it doesn't work. I'm still working on that one. Oh, wow. Uh, the only thing <laughs> is the screen is quite far away from me, so that would involve putting a wire all around. I suppose it, it, it could be done. Um, need to pull my finger out on that one. I think you're right. But I don't know where the remote controls for those tellies are. I think that's work from downstairs. And to actually get a lead downstairs would be a bit of a pain. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I see. I completely agree with you. It needs to go up on that screen somehow. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's a busy week for me. So, um, yeah. Good. All right, Mark. So, nice yeah, I'll see you on, on Monday, hopefully. I'll be down. Monday nights. Ten Monday nights. <laughs> okay. You okay, keep, I, uh, you, I, I'll, I'll let you keep charge of these the, these aggressive ladies. Oh yes, I'll stand in front of you and I'll just, yeah say leave them alone. <laughs> I actually do that on a Friday night. Actually, I'm, I stand in the DJ booth and uh, everyone thinks I'm the manager. Oh, do they? <laughs> yeah, oh. so because I'm wearing a suit, so they think I'm I'm his manager. Posh suit, eh? Yeah. All right, Mark. You have a lovely weekend. Okay, keep uh, keep rocking with the show, Chris. I'll keep listening and hello to everyone who's. Uh, who joined in. Okay, see you later then, mate. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye, Mark. Bye. Bye. There we are. That's uh, Mark in um, uh, London who's doing a karaoke. Good morning, Ronnie. Are you calling in on my mobile phone? Oh, you've not finished yet? No, I've not finished. We can go for hours. Yeah, hours, dear. I'm waiting for okay, my... Okay, no, um, did what? you not get my text? Uh, call me when you're finished. Right, okay. Yes, I'll be about 20 minutes. Okay, all right. No, well, because well, I need to go to town now. I've had a terrible night. Oh, okay. okay. So, um, yeah, I'm going to town now, dear, because I need to get back and have a sleep. I'll explain after when you ring me. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Oh, sounds like my mate hasn't, hasn't slept well last night, never mind. All right, so that's Mark. Let me see. Have we got any other messages coming in? Oh, Simon on the Isle of Wight wants to know, would I get a late request? No, I'm afraid you wouldn't, Simon. It has to be the same for everyone, dear. You know... You can't have, you can't give people preferential treatment at these karaoke nights because it's just not fair. And people would notice anyway. They'd notice. Oh, hang on a minute! You're giving them preferential treatment. I'm more concerned about what's her name's cat. Who is it again? Um, <coughs> uh, Pushka's cat. She might, she might be trying to intimidate her. Just give her lots of cuddles. That's what cats like. Lots of cuddles. All right. Um, <clears throat> there was some other stuff we were going to do on the show, but I, I, I'm kind of running out of time here. But I do want to tell you, <clears throat> finally today, that Tuesday, uh, was it Tuesday? No, Monday. It was Monday. We went back down, me and my best mate Ron, that was him on the phone there. We went back down to the Mulans Garden Centre which I told you about a couple of shows ago in Staines. Now, we went down there before <coughs> because I'd heard my friend on... I say my friend, my acquaintance. My acquaintance on the radio, Steve Allen. Now, Steve Allen does a early morning breakfast show on London, on LBC, which is a talk show in London. He, to me, is... He is my Barry Manilow, OK, of the talk show world. Do you see what I mean? Okay, so <clears throat> I know there are a lot of fanalos that now watch this show because I am a huge Barry Manilow fan. Picture on the wall behind me. There's his his March, his April picture. There'd be another picture um, probably on the next show when it becomes May. All right, huge Barry Manilow. Barry Manilow is my ultimate singer. Steve Allen is my ultimate talk show host. I think he's brilliant. He speaks only the truth. He really does. And he says things that perhaps you and um, maybe I wouldn't say. But we think. Do you see what I mean? <clears throat> right. So we are in this garden centre because it's the, it's the second time that we've been there. We've already been once. We went down there because he mentioned it and he said it was really cheap. And that. So we went down there a second time on uh, Monday. And Ronnie, he, my best mate, he went down there for some hanging baskets. You know, not, not the actual ready-made things with the plants and all that in them. But just, just, just the basic outline because he makes he wants to make them all himself. And some more trailing fuchsias because he's run out of those. I went in for some more bags of earth. And I'm over at the seed potato section, 
when I have little bags of seed potatoes. Because I'm going to try growing the potatoes again. I'm going to try them in the front garden this time. Because in the back garden, they're going wrong for some reason. I think there's, there's a problem with blight there. Um, and I'm looking at these seed potatoes on my own. Ron's at another part of the garden. So, and all of a sudden, I heard this voice. And I thought, oh, my God, that's Steve Allen. And I turned around and walking towards me, and he'd just spoken to one of the uh, members of staff there, who were very helpful in there. He's walking towards me, Steve Allen. And I'm like, Steve. And he said, yes. I said, Chris Reardon, and put my hand out, and he shook it straight away. Because I have written to him before, and we've spoken on the phone a couple of times. And, oh, my God, my ultimate... Greatest talk show host, Steve Allen, is standing there in front of me. And I'm like, oh, I can't believe it's, you know, I just couldn't believe it was him. And it was it was almost like we were friends, you know, good friends. And we started chatting and Ronnie came over. I said, it's Steve Allen. He said, oh, yeah, we listen to you all the time. And we do. I listen. I record, obviously, at 4 till 6.30 a.m. He's on, Monday to Friday on LBC. <clears throat> I'm not up at that time. So I set my recorder. I've got this little app on my iPhone called TuneIn Radio. And it allows you to um, uh, 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 set a recording time and, and that business. So, so I record the show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh and um, we have this conversation, and we must have been... Sta he's, he's, he's standing there with two two trayfuls of um, uh, 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 fuchsias. So I said, well, give me one of those. I'll hold that while we're chatting. And eventually he said, why are we, sitting? Why are we holding these? And we put them back down. And there's, you know, customers around us. And we, we just stood there and chatted for 45 minutes. And he was showing us... Uh, Ron was looking at these hanging baskets. And he said, well, why didn't you get these out? You know, the sides of them come out. And he was showing us how he does all these hanging baskets. And I said to him, do you ever do veg or anything like that? He says, no, no, I just do the fa hanging. He likes the whole instant garden thing, you know, where you don't germinate the seeds or anything like that. You just go out, you buy your plants, you buy your baskets, you put them in already grown, hang them up, and that's it. And he was telling me, always treat them with tomorite. Now, tomorite is like a, a fertiliser stuff, right? And he always puts that on his hanging baskets. And uh, he says um, they always come up really well and all that business. So he's telling us all that. And uh, as I say, in the end, we were talking to him for about 45 minutes and then he left. And I was just, <laughs> I was just absolutely in awe of this, that I had met my um, uh, ultimate chat show host just walking in the garden centre and I've been listening to him for must must be over 10 years now on the radio how fantastic is that oh, it really was I was sending him an email in the morning uh, great to meet you and all that and he read that out on the show And, and but it was, it was just like that we've been friends for years you know we just clicked straight away and I was so pleased to have met so that's how I met Steve Allen um, at the garden said so you, you just never know do you when you're out who you're gonna bump into huh maybe maybe later on i'll be i'll be doing a little bit of shopping in waitrose or something like that i might bump into you there i don't know anyway i'm gonna wrap it up here boys and girls there was some other bits and pieces i wanted to talk about today um <clears throat> But to be honest, we've uh, 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 we've done quite we've nearly done an hour and a half here. Just a couple of quick uh, messages here. Uh, first from Marge, who uh, says on the subject of the gardening. Last um, on, on on Wednesday show, I was talking a lot about gardening. She says gardening with Chris. I love it. We will be doing a couple of shows in the garden uh, when it's nice weather. So don't worry about that, Marge. We'll be in the garden. And um, Wendy wrote in. Last week, she says, Hi, Chris. Sorry it's taken me so long, but just to say thank you for singing Happy Birthday to me this morning. That was the last last uh, last week, wasn't it? Last Friday. It made me smile. I only managed to catch part of the show due to distractions and interruptions, but I will let them off being as it was my birthday. <laughs> interruptions, dear. We can't have people interrupting my viewers and listeners. It's outrageous. She says, uh, I'm going to put a sign on my door and a message on my answer machine. Please do not disturb. I'm watching the Chris Reardon show. Just kidding, but I feel like doing that sometimes. So thank you very much, Wendy. And thank you, you know, thank you for saying thank you to, uh, 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 for me singing. Uh, that's appreciated as well when you do something for someone and uh, they say thank you. It's, it's like being, you know, at the various 
little discos and karaoke and quiz nights that I do. And someone, you know, you get to the end of the night, and you're packing your stuff away, and someone, someone you don't know, comes up and says, thanks for a great night. Believe me, that's better than getting paid. It's so nice for people to do that. Right, that's it for the uh, show today, boys and girls. I shall now disappear, disappear, and uh, get my tracksuit on and, and go for a 20-minute run or or uh, uh, and ring my friend back to see what's wrong with him. Thanks very much for watching and listening. Uh, my email address, if you'd like to join in for the next show, send in an email. I'll read it out on the next show. is quick because we have not, actually not got any emails here at the moment that I'm hanging on to, I don't think. I think we've completely cleared the emails. So if you've got an email that you want to... Uh, oh, I think I have anyway. Hang on, what's this here? I do hate making you wait for... If you're good enough to send in emails... Oh, I've got something on that. Hang on, let me have a look. Oh, dear me. Because we're running out of time now on the, on the computer as well. Is that all the emails? Yes, it is. Okay, I haven't got any emails at all waiting to be read out here. So if you send something in, it will come up on Wednesday's show. My name's Chris Reardon. This has been United Kingdom Talk. Once again, email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. The next live show, will, that's the live recording of Saturday's show, will be next Friday morning at 1030 and uh, if you'd like to find where that is, simply go to the main website for this show, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, and at the very top, it will tell you where you can join us live. Thanks very much for watching and listening. See you on the next show. Bye-bye now.